In this lecture, we are going to talk about the math object and some of its methods and properties. The JavaScript math object allows us to perform some mathematical operations on numbers. Unlike other global objects like date, string, etc., math object does not have a constructor. All the methods and properties of math object are static. That means all the methods and properties of math object can be used without creating the math object. So let's see some of the methods and properties of this math object. Let's start with this round method. So as I said, all the methods and properties of the math object are static. So we don't have to create an object of this math object. We can simply say math dot and we will have all the methods and properties which this math object has. And since they are static methods and static properties, we can directly use it on this math object. Okay, so math dot we want to use this round method. And this round method returns the rounded value to the nearest integer. So let's pass 3.7. In this case, if we log this, this round method will round this 3.7 and return the nearest integer. So for 3.7, the nearest integer will be 4. Let's save this. Let's refresh the page and it is returning 4. On the other hand, if we pass 3.3, in that case, the nearest integer will be 3. Right? So now it will return 3. Okay? Now what will happen if we pass 3.5? In case of 3.5, it will return 4. Okay. So for 3.5, it will consider that the next nearest integer is the, you know, is the rounded value for this 3.5. So this round method will round the round a given floating point number and return the nearest integer. Okay. So this round method of this math object will return the value of x rounded to its nearest integer. This math object also has a POW power method and it will return the value of x to the power y. So for example, if we say math dot power and let's pass 8 and maybe 2. So it will return a value 8 to the power 2. So 8 multiplied by itself two times. Okay, let's log this and it should return 8 to the power 2 is 64. So it should return 64. So let's say console.log. Let's save this. Let's refresh the page and it will return 64. Okay. If you pass 8 to the 8 and 3, then 8 will multiply by itself 3 times. So it is similar to 8 to the power 3. So in that case, it will return 512. Okay, so if you multiply 8 by itself 3 times, it will return 512. So this power is this POW method, power method returns the x to the power y. Okay, so the first parameter will be x, second parameter will be y, and it will return x to the power y. We also have this square root method, which returns the square root of x. So if we pass, let's copy this. And if we pass 64 here, it will return the square root of 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. So if we refresh the page, oh, it should be square root. So sq rt okay let's save the change and now it will return 8 if we pass if we pass 16 then square root of 16 is 4 so it should return 4 okay so this square root will return the square root of a given number then we also have a method to get the absolute value of a given number so this abs method 
uh, we will pass some number to this ABS method and it will return its absolute value. That means the positive value. So let's say console.log and math.abs. And to this, let's pass minus 4.7. So here it will return 4.7. Let's refresh the page and it will return 4.7. So you pass any negative number, it will make it positive and return it. So maybe minus 5.2. Let's save this. Let's refresh the page and it will return its positive value. On the other hand, if, we, if you pass the positive value, there will be no change in the returned value. Okay, so it will still return 5.2. Okay. Then we also have seal and floor methods. So the seal method will return the rounded, you know, return the value of x rounded up to its nearest integer. Okay, so rounded up. Now let's use this seal method to understand it. So math dot seal. Okay, so we have this round method which will give you the a nearest integer. Okay, but the seal method will give you the nearest next integer so if we pass 3.3 the nearest next integer is 4 right so let's refresh the page and it will return 4 if you pass 3.7 still the nearest next integer is 4 so it will return 4 okay so the seal method will return the nearest next integer okay it will give you the it will round up the number and it will give you the nearest next integer on the other hand, we have we also have this math dot floor, and it will round the number down. So that means it will give you the nearest previous integer. So if we use the same example, let me copy this. Let's use it here, and instead of seal, let's say floor. So it will give you the nearest previous integer. So in this for 3.7, the nearest previous integer is. 3 right so it will return 3 okay so this seal method round up the number the value which we pass to this method and give its nearest integer and this floor method round down its near you know the value which we have passed and returns its nearest integer okay we also have this random method which we have already talked about in our previous lectures and it returns a random number between 0 and 1 so 0 is inclusive and 1 is exclu exclusive so it returns a random number between 0 and 1 so let's use this console.log math.random okay so it will return a random number between 0 and 1 and 0 is inclusive and 1 is exclusive okay so every time you refresh the page a new random number will be displayed and this random number will, will be between 0 and 1 okay so we have already talked about this math.random in great detail in one of our previous lecture so this math object has several methods like this which you can use to do some operation on numbers and this math object has eight properties. Okay, so math object properties. And these eight properties are these properties. Okay, so math.py will return you the value for pi. So if we log this. Save the changes. Let's refresh the page and it will return the value of pi. Similarly, we have math.square root that returns the square root of 2. We have math.square square root 1 underscore 2 and it returns the square root of 1 by 2. And we have other properties like this. Okay. So this is all about math object and its methods and uh, properties. Now, I included this lecture because sometimes these math 
ob I mean math methods math object methods and properties can be useful in some situations and we have already seen one such situation when we were working on the pig game project where we had to use we have we had to get a random number out of one and six so we talked about that in that lecture so these math object methods and properties can be useful in some situations so that's why i wanted to include this lecture in this course if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends